Welcome to the very first lecture of SBL Strategic Business Leader. This is going to be an introductory lecture. We'll not cover or we'll not go into much depths of the syllabus right now. But since this is the first lecture, I'll uh, <clears throat> try to first give you an introduction of what SBL is and what all is covered under the syllabus, how the exam is going to be and how we as students are supposed to approach this paper. So before directly jumping, let me first give you a brief introduction about myself. I am Umkar and I am based out of Mumbai. I am a chartered accountant. I cleared my chartered accountancy in 2020. And since then, uh, so for last three years so I cleared in November 2020 and for the last three years I am working in corporate in financial planning and analysis profile in 2022 I started with my ACCA as well <clears throat> and in December 22 I completed all the papers of ACCA and due to God's grace I was able to secure all India rank one and global rank 22 at an overall level and in ifrs that is the sbr paper i was able to secure all india rank 2 and global rank 6 so this is about me and i will be your tutor for strategic business leader paper so let us quickly look at how our exam pattern or how our exams are at the professional level SBL is a professional level uh, paper so as you can see there are two types of exams or two types of papers in the professional level the first one is which you can see in red is the essential papers that are the two compulsory papers that you have to attempt uh, as a part of your professional level exams so those are SBL, that is Strategic Business Leader, which we are starting. And second one is SBR, which is nothing but your IFRS paper. So these two are the essential papers that you have to have to have to attempt and clear in order to be called as an ACCA. And there are four papers out of which you have to pick any two. Uh, the four papers are Advanced Audit and Assurance, that is AAA then advanced financial management that is afm advanced performance management that is apm and advanced taxation that is atx so out of these four papers you need to choose any two and these two essential and two optional papers together four papers after you clear the four professional papers you are called an acca affiliate so this is our acca professional level exam how it works okay so let us quickly uh, start I, I would not say start but i would first uh, like you to get uh, get acclimatized with how the paper is so let us first understand the uh, sbl exam how it works so friends uh, <clears throat> sbl as a paper i would say it is different than all the other papers that you might attempt in the professional level because what happens friends every paper is is a is a core subject so sbr is a ifrs paper apm is a costing paper afm is a financial management paper so these papers will uh, test your practical your concepts on that specific uh, line of uh, what you can say line line of uh, your career so if you want to go into finance or you want to go into costing you want to go into accounts that is a specific subject for each one of them but this sbl paper irrespective of where you go this paper remains relevant for you from a career's perspective so strategic business leader as the name suggests is a leadership based paper in the SBL paper, you will be asked to demonstrate organizational leadership. You will be asked to think like a leader. You will be asked to give advice. You will be asked to become a consultant to, to many people in the organization as an external consultant as and as an internal consultant as well. 
so this is a very different paper i won't say it is a difficult paper it is a different paper it is an interesting paper you will uh, if you if you get the right mindset and if you are willing to put that effort into that into this paper i am sure you will enjoy learning or enjoy studying this paper learning is a wrong word because we don't want to uh, we don't want to mug anything up uh, rather it is not expected from any of us what is expected from us is to get the right mindset is to understand the concepts clearly and then apply those concepts properly in the exam and later in your actual life so this sbl paper will test how you are going to become a future leader and for that what all you need to do what all skills you need to have in this paper so this is the basic crux of the sbl exam then this paper is completely computer based uh, if you are a first time acca student if sbl is your first paper then this might be a new information for you that every paper in acca is now computer based that you can attempt either from home uh, with, uh, from your personal laptop or a computer and or you can visit a center and attempt the exam from there so it is fully computer based and since this is computer based and very different from all our traditional exams which we have been attempting our entire life the pen and paper based exams i would suggest you i would advise you that please 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 do not use pen and paper while practicing or while studying for any of your exams in acca since the final output which you want to give is on computer is on a spreadsheet on a word on a presentation what i would suggest is do all of your practices do all of your question solving do all of your working notes on the computer and as far as possible on the acca practice platform we will explore the acca practice platform as well acca practice platform is nothing but a simulated environment uh, that you get before you actually sit for the exam it is very very close to how the exam will be and you will actually get to test the functionalities of all various types of response options that you have so this is one very very important point that since this paper is a completely computer based exam you have to ensure that you do not take a pen and paper in your hand whatever you want to do whatever working notes whatever running notes you want to have start typing because what what happens friends uh, we think that our writing speed is very uh, our, our typing speed is very good but unfortunately that is not the case what we think as a good writing speed is not really a good writing speed and if we do not have enough practice of, of typing earlier then in the exam we get in a fix right we just we just sit on the exam we just sit on the desk for the first time and as we start typing we realize that oh no this paper is way too lengthy but that's not the case you have to you have to practice a lot and you have to ensure that your typing speed matches uh, to the level that is required okay then as you see the total marks are 100 marks like any other paper and you need to score 50 marks to clear the sbl paper exam time would be 3 hours and 15 minutes so all in all 195 minutes of time that you have in actually reading writing analyzing reflecting whatever you want to do during those 195 minutes you have it with you earlier it was a four hours exam so if i'm not wrong prior to september 23 so i am in that category where i had written a four hour sbl exam and trust me it was one hell of those four hours because the because during that last one hour or one one and a half hour your patience just runs out the exam is so lengthy so lengthy you just keep on typing 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 and after a point it's like i'm done i just don't want to sit for this exam anymore and please god help me this uh let please end this exam as soon as possible so they have now reduced the time from four hours to three hours and 15 minutes obviously they have not done it because of the factors that i mentioned but there are there are some other factors which i will uh, come to you 
which which will get get to uh, as we go go ahead with this slide so the reason they have uh, reduced from 4 hours to 15 minutes 4 hours to 3 hours and 15 minutes is a different one okay then all the questions in sbl paper are compulsory questions all the questions earlier what was there that <clears throat> Uh, I'm straight away jumping to the next point uh, earlier. What was there was it was a 100 mark single case study paper single case study. So what used to happen as soon as we would click start exam, all we used to get was one screen wherein there were there was a plethora of reports, spreadsheets and whatnot. Uh, what not information literally literally every information that you have on the planet there used to be around 10 to 15 exhibits that we used to read about that one single case study and after reading all the all the exhibits we used to attempt our exam but right now after the 2023 attempt they have now changed it to three different tasks obviously there will be one integrated case study so there will be uh, a situation about one company but it will be divided into three different tasks unlike earlier where we used to write the entire 100 mark paper in just one task and now since there is there are three different tasks uh, it they become three different questions and you get three different response options to write your paper so it does not become a clutter it does not become a mess in just one response option so these 100 marks which will be divided into three tasks uh, the acca body has mentioned that there is no fixed marks for a task so these tasks marks can vary it can be 50 25 25 it can be 30 30 40 any anything they want so there will be three tasks that is for sure but the marks that would be there for each task will vary these 100 marks will be divided into two parts first is the technical part which will be for 80 marks which will obviously test your concepts your theories how you apply a concept or a theory to your situation and second part would be the professional skills which i would say are very 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 important from especially the sbl exam perspective that will be tested for 20 marks so this professional skills are nothing but the soft skills and we will be learning them uh, in pretty depth uh, going forward these 20 marks would test how you write your paper rather than the content which you are writing so these are nothing but soft skills which the examiner will test and will it will ensure that you are writing the exam professionally you are a professional you should write your exam like a professional then as i mentioned it will be a case study exam and there will be one integrated case study so there will be one company uh, that about which you will be given all the information and there will be three tasks which are dependent on that one company and various different scenarios then there is this very very important change that was done from september 2023 exam and exactly the reason why the time limit was reduced from 4 hours to 3 hours and 15 minutes is the pre-seen information please note guys that this is a very 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 important change that has come in effect from september 2023 exams is that there will now be a pre-seen information regarding the industry and the fictitious organization about which you will be tested in the exam so what will happen is if your exam is say somewhere for in the first week of june uh, the acca body will provide you a, a, a pre-seen exhibit regarding the organization the industry in which it operates and all the various reports that they can give regarding that organization to show its performance to show its actions etc two weeks prior to your exam date so somewhere around 20th may it uh, they will publish the pre-seen information on your site and you will be able to access it so this was a very big change that the acca institute brought in in september 2023 examination and i think it was a very important change because what happens friends uh, just just 
just visualize it you are in a corporate environment you go to a company you are in the position of a management or in the or in a position of a leader there won't be a situation that will come now and you will be expected to solve it in the next four hours right so that is unreasonable and that does not happen so whenever a situation comes you as a leader you as a management have the time you should have the time to analyze to evaluate to to talk to people to understand the background of that specific problem and then after two or three weeks you can start with your resolution you can start with your solutions and any other things that you want to suggest to solve the problem effectively so this is exactly what is being done they are trying you they are trying to bring you as close as possible to the real world similar similar to the example that i gave what they will do is they will give you the company the industry the problems whatever they are facing and rather not the problems they will give you entire information about the company about the industry how the industry is growing how the company is growing what is the profitability what are the macroeconomic factors how is the eps how are the investors reacting to the company performance how is the share price moving and n number of information they will give you well in advance what it will ensure is that you as a student or you as a leader will get sufficient time to analyze to grasp the information to do your own not i would not say research to do to take your own time to analyze the information to fire to to form your own conclusions and then on the day of the exams when you are actually asked to solve a specific problem you already have the background ready with you earlier what used to happen we used to get that exhibit on the day of the exam so when i log in on the practice platform i used to get the entire 16 17 pages of information and what was expected from we as students was that analyze evaluate make a conclusion about the information in those in that one hour and then write the examination in that in those next three hours which was illogical and even i support this step it is a excellent step to bring us to as close as possible to the actual scenario and that is the reason they have now introduced this change and the last point about the sbl exam is what would be the response options so in a company when you go into an organization in any role typically you work around three things first is your microsoft word microsoft excel and third is your powerpoint and those exact those are the exact options you have to respond to various questions that are been asked in the sbl exam in the sbl exam you might be asked to write a report or you might be asked to present to your board or the ceo or you might be asked to make some calculations and hence you have been equipped or you are equipped with all the necessary resources that are required to make your point as clear and as concise as possible okay so let me quickly throw some more light on this pre-seen information which is a new concept and if if someone of any one of you has not heard of it or has not read the acca global website it's just for your information so what is this pre-seen information as i told earlier it will be released two weeks prior to the exam setting and obviously uh, it is a pre-seen information it will also be available to you for your reference during the exam so this pre seen information will be a long 16 maybe 10 15 pages of information and during the exam you will have a tab wherein you can always refer to the pre seen information of course you cannot print a copy of your own pre seen information and then refer in the exam with with your your markings on that no that is not allowed uh, this is a closed book exam there are no open books allowed so you will be asked to not carry any of your own materials a copy of the pre-seen will be available in the exam so what this pre-seen information will be it will contain a background and a contextual information on the fictitious organization obviously due to confidentiality issues or 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 the legal problems we are not allowed or acca is not allowed to quote real organizations in in the paper right so then 
ACCA will quote a fictitious organization. It will have fictitious numbers presented in front of you and the industry in which it operates. So what is expected from you as students? You should familiarize yourself. The basic expectation from this pre scene information is you should familiarize yourself with the information which is given. You will be given all the details about the company, the, the, the leadership, the investor relations or the various other metrics, KPIs, uh, whatever are available regarding the company and the industry. And you are expected to do your own research. You are expected to do your own analysis. I, I Sorry, not research. You are expected to do your own analysis, your own evaluation, draw your own conclusions regarding the metrics. Very important point that is the fourth point is you are not expected. Please keep in mind you are not expected. Um, I apologize that I, I, I said the word research earlier. That was a mistake. I am repeating it. You are not expected to conduct any further research into the industry. So it is very clearly given in the on the ACCA platform that whatever information is in the pre scene is your Bible so that you are not expected to go any in, into any depth of the industry except what is required to understand the terminologies and activities of the company. So there might be some jargons which are being used. There might be some short forms which are being used in the in the in the pre scene for which you might need to do a little Google search. Otherwise, you are not expected to go into any further depths about the industry because like the organization is fictitious, even the industry metrics would be a little tweaked for the exam scenario. So, for example, if I say Horeca, uh, it is a very famous term in the restaurant business. It is a short form for hotels, restaurants and cafes. Many, many people say Horeca business. So these are some of the jargons which they might use in the uh, in the uh, pre scene information, which you can easily search on Google and you might get a more in you might get some more information on that. But otherwise, don't go into much much depth of what the industry is, what is the real life scenario in the industry and you are not expected to do that. Okay, then the next point is pre scene information is not the complete information which you have with you. Keep in mind that pre scene information is only the background and the contextual information. Whatever is being asked to you on the day of the exam, anything that is directly related to the requirements will come as an additional information to you on the day of the exam. So on the day of the exam, you have your pre scene and you will have your additional information that sets the tone for your requirements. So don't be under the impression that pre scene information is the only information that we need to understand. Do it, it will come as a surprise for you otherwise on the day of the exam. But on the day of the exam, remember that you will get some information, additional information, which you might need to relate or you which you which you might need to link to your pre scene information. OK, so now where the how what would this information be uh, it can be from anywhere it can contain extract of meetings it like minutes of meetings it can be board reports it can be your share price movement it can be your news reports it can be a letter that is being written from for a ceo uh, from any other manager or a senior manager and anything in the world is possible to be given as an information to you okay so why was this change made I told you in the earlier slide that it provides a closer alignment to the workplace skills. Like I told you that it brings us closer to the reality. What happens in the reality that we get the information first. We have some time with ourselves and then we do our own studies. We do our own research. We do our own calculations and then we have to present it to your seniors so exactly why the pre scene information concept was introduced and obviously the second point was that it will give the students time to familiarize themselves with the business and the industry so you will get some more time to analyze the company the industry and whatnot and then you will get a chance to attempt the exam with a more strategic and professional mindset so what used to happen earlier guys i'll share my personal uh, 
experience regarding this i was in the exam where we used to get the information on the day of the exam and the exam was a 4 hour exam so uh, like um, i mean I mean, since the exam was the f for for four hours, as such, we as students were extremely tense as to first was how will we grasp so much in such a short period of time, and secondly, will we have enough stamina and mental strength to survive those four hours? So that used to be our major challenge or our major anxieties that we used to have before the paper. But guys, this is a professional exam these types of worries should not be there when you're writing something like sbl in paper like sbl your worries or your your stress should be more about how well i can convey my point to the examiner and not how quickly can i read the paper or how quickly can i grasp the paper so that is not what is expected from you what is expected from you is to act strategically provide sound decisions give the best analysis provide accurate explanations all this is expected from you you should not waste your time in in learning or in memorizing what is given in the examination and that is not what what happens in real life as well so this was the basic criteria of the pre-seen information okay so then let us come to the SBL syllabus. What actually are we learning? So as I told earlier, there are two parts to the SBL paper. One is the 80 marks of technical skills and second is 20 marks of professional skills. So what all covers these 100 marks, especially the 80 marks of technical skills is you will be tested or you will be asked to become a leader and what all do you need to learn to become an effective leader are these three are these 10 things first is leadership obviously the name suggests strategic business leader you have to think like a leader act like a leader then second is governance if you become a leader if you become a founder of your own company the very important thing that comes to your mind or should worry you is how well my company is governed so that is a second syllabus that is a second a chapter which we have or a sub part which we have in our syllabus third is strategy obviously as a ceo once you become a ceo of the company your main focus is to drive the company to a, with the correct strategy to achieve your goals so strategy making strategy analysis whether we are drifting away from our strategy all these things will be covered in your strategy part then fourth is risk of course when we enter into the market when we venture into something new there are risks right this writing an exam is a risk that there is a 50 percent chance that we might not clear so similarly in a business environment there is a risk that we might fail we might not be able to achieve the profits that we had desired so how to manage risk how to assess risks all these also come as a part of your job responsibilities as a leader so even this we will be covering then technology we are in the era of technology right technology is evolving so fast that it is beyond our pace we we are we are thrown with n number of things each and every day like there is there is ai there is machine learning there is there is a uh, uh, robotics there is automation and all these things are 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 coming to us in such a short period of time that we as finance people also need to build up ourselves with it we need to ensure that we are i won't say we are experts in technology or we should not we should be experts in technology that is not possible but at least we should be aware of what technologies are there in the market what all things can be used to make our life easier and not just from a finance perspective but from a leader perspective what all technologies are there in the market we have to at least know them we have to at least understand what goes behind it so we will touch base on a few technologies that are trending in the market there is blockchain as well you must have heard of Bitcoin and all that stuff. So that is a different technology altogether. Then there comes organizational control and audit. With every organization, you might see a list of internal controls, how the organization aims to achieve its objectives. And there are some controls which we put in place 
to ensure that any risks or any fraud is prevented at an early stage and audit also becomes a part of that entire control process so as our uh, as our role as a leader we should also ensure that our controlling department is performing well so, so this is something that has has been incorporated in our syllabus then obviously finance that is our heart we uh, finance is at the heart of our entire life i would say we are finance guys per se so this has to be a part in our syllabus but don't just think finance as a role of a cfo obviously you are finance guys you will become a cfo of some company at a point but don't just limit your ambition to the cfo have the ambition to become the ceo why not i am a finance guy does that mean that i cannot become a ceo of any company obviously not so even the ceo has uh has to be has to be financially sound and right now what we are learning is not for the cfo we are learning or we are doing this entire syllabus for getting into the position of the ceo of the founder of the board member right so think from that perspective when you become the ceo finance will become a part of the of your syllabus and it will not be the entire syllabus for you or the entire job description for you hence finance is there in your syllabus of sbl but it is not a good or it is not a vast portion of your syllabus it is just a part obviously to test your financial knowledge you are you are attempting other papers like uh, afm apm and sbr so that is already getting tested in some other chapter in some other papers and but of course as a leader you should have knowledge of finance so that is what is given in the sbl syllabus then last uh, then the eighth point is enabling success and change management so that this talks about change change is the only constant which we see and it is true in everything that we do the world is changing and we must change the organization must change the people must change and that is what is given in these in this chapter enabling success and change management is how to manage change how to manage people and how to manage their anxieties regarding the change ninth is the professional skills that are being tested for your 20 marks i would say very 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 important part of your entire sbl paper we are today going to start with the ninth chapter that is the professional skills itself because it's my opinion it's 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 my experience that says that professional skills matter the most in writing your sbl paper why we will get it get to it and last is other employability and digital skills it is a small chapter it it it, it mostly revolves around how you can use technology to write your answers so basically it talks about how to use the word, word processor how to use the spreadsheet how to use the the slides in writing your exam a little better so 10th chapter is not a, a very big chapter per se but yeah the other nine chapters are more or less your entire sbl syllabus okay so just look at the right side of the box which i have given that due to the varied effects of covid-19 the pre seen and the sbl live exam will not consider any specific covid-19 related situations so as you know covid-19 disrupted the entire world but that was a one off situation right and that is not the standard or that was not the benchmark whatever was done during covid-19 to tackle it was a one off situation and hence it is given that it, you will not consider any specific covid-19 situations and as a student you should also ignore the effect of covid-19 you should just ignore that you should just you should just let go of the fact that it ever happened and write your answers as if everything was normal so this is something that you have to keep in mind while studying your sbl syllabus so when you study for sbl don't think that during covid 19 we had done this or the world had adapted to this that is not the case you have to think about what is normal what is ideal okay so this was your entire sbl syllabus let me just quickly drink water okay so now we'll come to the i would say the first sub topic that is the professional skills which are being tested for 
huge marks okay as i said earlier i would treat these 20 marks as the most important marks of your sbl paper because these 20 marks will test more about how to write your answers rather than what you are writing in your answer so right from school till now we are more focused on the content we are more focused on writing the correct definition on writing the correct points writing the correct description yeah that is important and we have 80 marks reserved for that as well but you are a professional now you are a professional now you are writing a professional level exam and you are being asked to become a leader in the true sense of it so these 20 marks will test your professionalism your soft skills how you present yourself while writing the answer is what these 20 marks are all about so there are five professional skills which acca body has tested or will be testing in your paper what are these five skills we'll go one by one so the first skill which is very very important is communication so the so when they ask in the paper that your communication skill is being tested what they are expecting are these three points that you have to inform concisely and clearly you have to persuade using logical and compelling arguments and you have to clarify and simplify complex issues so just think when you become an advisor to the ceo or you when you become an advisor or a management consultant to the to any big organization what matters the most is how well you communicate right it is a reputation of all of our finance guys that we are not very good at communicating or presenting ourselves to the board and hence it is said that mbas are being preferred over us but i do not agree to it we are the more knowledgeable ones we are we are having the relevant finance degree and it should be us who should be presenting to the board it should be us who should be presenting all the financial data to the board but for that we need to develop good communication and presentation skills and that is what is being targeted here so when we say we have to inform concisely and clearly that means you have to look who you are talking to if you are a if you are an advisor who wants to write to the ceo or the cfo what is expected from you is not to write pages and pages of answer you have to be concise you have to write to the point you have to exactly tackle the issue what is being expected and that is what you have to do in the paper as well then you have to persuade you have to put your argument in short but exactly clear points what you want to mention so that is persuade and lastly there will be many complex issues which you need to solve and your job as an advisor or as a consultant is to obviously explain the issue to the board and then give your solution so that is what is expected from you in the exam as well there will be many complex issues that will be there in the in the company in the industry and wherever your job as an advisor or as a professional will be to simplify those it will be to break it down into very simple terms it will be to break it down in terms that the board will understand that the ceo will understand so now so now look at it like this right you are a finance professional uh, working on some financial things your ceo is not really a finance person he might be an engineer he might be a it guy so now here you have to think that this guy is the ceo obviously he knows a lot about business a lot about how the business is working and all that stuff but since he's not from the finance side he might not know some financial things that are critical to a business there might be some ifrs standards which have some implications on the business there are some legal standards which have some implications on business so when you as a management consultant you want to explain some financial concepts to the to the ceo or the management you have to explain it simplify it and properly summarize it so that it becomes easier for him to understand okay on the other hand let us say you are dealing with the cfo 
Now, CFO being a finance guy himself, he already knows, he's already expected to know all the financial things that are happening in the market around the world. So in that case, you need not go into as much simplification as you might have gone for the purpose of CEO. In this case, you might simply put your point forward in the term, in the financial language that you and the CFO are sure will understand. So this is where your communication skills act. And this is what your examiner will also check that who are you and who you are writing to. So this will, the, this is the communication angle that is being tested. Now, second professional skill is the commercial acumen now this this professional skill becomes very important and will be tested more vigorously is because of the pre scene earlier when the paper used to get to us to the students on the day of the exam or the industry and the company used to get revealed to us on the day of the exam it was very unjust on students to literally know a lot of things about the industry being asked because obviously we are students right we are very fresh into the market we are we don't have much experience hardly we are having one or two years of experience how is it expected from any one of us to really know about each and every industry that is there on the face of the earth it is not possible you might know about one or two or three industries but on the day of the exam when you will be asked about a fourth industry and then you will be tested on the commercial acumen uh, skill that was a little unfair is what what i thought and by the and because of the pre scene now they have tackled this issue you were you are getting the pre scene information two weeks in advance and now you have sufficient time to understand the industry to do up to you to do if you want to do some research it's up to you you are not expected but obviously if you want you can very well do your own research to get to know something more about the industry so this is the commercial acumen that is being aware or having awareness of the business and the external environment so what are you expected to do you obviously have to demonstrate awareness you should show that you have some knowledge about the industry then you should use judgments to identify key issues resolve problems and identify solution all of this comes down to just one thing that you should be aware of the external environment you should be aware of what is going on around you or in your industry or in your company and you should be able to link it to various factors that are going on in the company and lastly you have to show insight you have to show that you know a lot of things about cause and effect what is causing what and how one financial indicator is giving or is changing the other financial indicator all these insights you have to show and this becomes a part of commercial acumen then the third skill which is very very important is the analysis obviously we know the meaning of this term we have to investigate we have to analyze we have to go into the depth and we have to and you you have to get to know what is happening behind your company you have to investigate information from a wide range of sources to understand the cause of the problem you have to understand why the problem happened you are you will be given a lot of metrics you will be given a lot of past data to understand how the company was doing from the last four years five years what were the share price movements what was the eps movement what was the receivables ratio and all the information you will be given and you will be asked to draw conclusions you will be asked to investigate that information you will be asked to interlink that information with various sources and draw your conclusion now analysis is not just about drawing information it is also uh, not just about drawing conclusion it is also about obtaining suitable evidence so whatever you are justifying you should have some evidence behind that your statement should be with evidence with some working with some supporting so even that becomes a part of analysis and after analysis how this information can be used for the betterment of the organization for the benefit of the organization so all these three parts become a part become your crux of the analysis professional skill then the fourth professional skill becomes skepticism that is having a questioning mind not taking anything at a face value very very important especially from an audit perspective that when you go to a company when you have the balance sheet and the pnl in hand the first 
or the thought with which you have to start your analysis is that something is wrong with the company this is also relevant in case of forensic audits or fraud investigations obviously there is something wrong you cannot take anything at face value you have to question everything obviously not question each and everything you have to question the relevant things so that is what the skepticism is that you have to probe into underlying reasons beyond what is apparent you have to go deep into it you have to ask questions like why what how how did this happen what led to this what were the causes behind the underlying thing you have to question facts so just because someone is saying or someone is telling you that this is the case in my company and does not mean it is the case it might be a case of that person saving his saving his own job so you don't have to take anything at face value you have to question if you find anything that is that is not as per the standards that is not as per the ideal scenario you have to straight away question it but the third point very important you have to do it in a professional manner you can't just go there and bash people in a harsh language you are in a professional world you are in a job you are doing you are doing a corporate job you have to be corporate in your dealings as well you have to challenge them but it has to be logical it has to be conceptual it has to be firm and most important it has to be professional uh, it has to be very professional in its tone so this was skepticism and the last and the most important professional skill that is uh, evaluation where you would be asked to evaluate the decisions as a management consultant or as an analyst that is an external consultant maybe you would be asked to assess or to judge whether the decisions that were taken by the ceo or the cfo are right or not and that becomes a very important or a challenging task where you might first need to gather a lot of data from the pre-seen information from the new information that is being given uh, during the exam and then form your own conclusions so evaluation is again a very important skill that you have to have you have to be objective you have to you have to appraise facts and opinions in an unbiased manner you cannot just go and favor some person or a or a position because of that position it's it's not the case just just because he is the ceo or the cfo does not mean he is right he might be wrong about some things and you should have that capacity to make that opinion or to make that fact very clear to that clear to that person so in evaluation comes three points that you have to assess and use judgment with when considering issues you have to be you have to be very free in your mind you have to you have to have knowledge of all the facts and you should use sound logical and reasoned judgment when making any decision or when considering any issues then evaluation also involves making or estimating trends and making reasoned forecast of implications of various factors so there will be a case when you will be asked to you will be asked to build a forecast about xyz factors that are being changed so you will be asked to build a forecast after three parameters are being changed in the company and that will require the evaluation of various factors what is the implication of one factor in another factor so it's not always the case that three factors which are being changed are are having an effect in isolation it is very much possible that because of the change in one factor there is a change in some other factor so let us say for example uh, if i can give an example of layoffs right uh, laying off a company laying off a pool of resources which is what is happening recently in this world laying off a pool of resources obviously has the direct effect of cost savings right you will save a huge amount of cost in after after you lay off a lot of people but there will be a short term cost in terms of severance pay in terms of gratuity and all that stuff so that is a very direct uh, what you can say direct effect of your action or your uh, or your factor of laying off people but there can also be an indirect factor which will cause a reduction in revenue or reduction in sales which you have to now assess which you now have to have that judgment why because of the news that this company has laid off and now market has lost confidence in this company so this will be given somewhere in your exhibit somewhere in your 
news releases press releases and this is a fact that you need to consider while making an evaluation so if you if in the exam you just straight away write that because because of the layoffs we have saved a lot of cost now profits will increase by this many dollars but you are not taking in account the emotional factor of the decision so it can very well happen that even though your cost is being saved you have lost a lot of revenue so now as a as an evaluation skill this becomes a very important part that you need to demonstrate and this becomes uh, one of the most critical parts in the in in marking you in marking your answer from an examiner's perspective so these uh, these were the three things that are a part of an that were that are part of the evaluation skill okay so these were the five professional skills that will be tested in your paper and that prof those professional skills will be for 20 big marks do not do not do not miss this professional skills always keep in mind that you have to write your paper that is for 80 marks but you have to also gain those 20 marks by writing the paper properly that is very very important for you to get those 80 marks okay so now that there is one disclaimer that each professional skill will be tested only once and it will be worth four marks so earlier what used to happen that the professional skill used to get tested multiple times and for a fraction of marks as well so it could be the case that evaluation is being tested for two marks in one in one task then uh, in then analysis is being tested for five marks then skepticism being, is being tested for three marks now that won't be the case there will be a straight away four mark per evaluation skill that will be tested and it will be tested only once so each each skill will be tested and it will be worth four marks in one or the other task so this was about professional skills okay so this was more or less my start of the introduction lecture and I would not directly jump into the technical uh, technical syllabus we'll obviously do it uh, together as the as we progress but the most important thing which i want to highlight before we conclude this lecture is how to approach sbl and i think this ending 10 minutes or the last 5 to 10 minutes of this lecture will set the tone of how you will approach sbl how you will study sbl because from my personal experience i can tell that many students find this paper difficult because they don't have the right approach they don't have the right mindset while reading sbl the most basic mistake that students do while approaching sbl is like is they study this paper as as an as a paper they study this as a subject they study this as some as any other subject with concepts and theories please please don't do that the first and most important thing that you have to keep in mind is you have to approach SBL like a story. You have to read it as if you are reading a storybook, as if you are actually sensing those things, as if you are actually having those things in your environment. Read it like a read it like a case study read it like something which actually has happened to you or will happen to you don't try to mug up anything understand the concepts in sbl you will you will up you will be thrown with a lot of theories a lot of models and whatnot but don't get pressured these theories and models are only for better understanding of the concept you are not expected to learn the model you are not expected to write the model word by word you are only expected to understand the model what that model actually conveys and then write the or quote the model in your own words in the paper so as a student what you need to first start uh, start with SBL is we are reading SBL like a storybook we are re approaching SBL like a case study we are reading it like a case report I don't want to I don't want to teach a subject I just want to I just want to tell you a story about how a business functions about how leaders think and then it is your job as students to apply it to yourself so what I used to do during my time in ACCA during ACCA studies is I used to sit on the desk with the mindset that 
if in the future sometime i start my own company or if right now i am a ceo or a cfo of a big multinational company how would i tackle any of the challenges that come in my way i have i have taken this prestigious seat for the first time and now it's my job to steer the company to a positive direction how will i think how will i think effectively how will the company move ahead and then i started reading the chapter and as and when each and every concept started unfolding i started applying that concept to my own fictitious organization that i had built in my mind i used to i used to build i used to make my own uh make my own problems and then apply the concept or apply the model to that problem to 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 evaluate whether this model can fit properly in my in my problem and whether i can whether this model can solve my problem effectively so try this mindset game and i'm sure if you change this mindset to a to more of a leader mindset to more of a founder mindset rather than a student mindset you will find it very very easy to actually study sbl okay then don't just don't just mug up anything don't just read read the read the text for the purpose of it or read the study hub for the purpose of it read it and ask questions you have to ask questions like why ask questions like how you should not just accept it for because it is given and we are already studying it as a part of our professional skills right question it why is this model given why do you think what what do you think the model is solving how can i use this model for the betterment of my own decisions or my betterment of my own company and once you start asking these questions inadvertently you tend to go deeper into the concept you tend to search a little more on google you tend to find some real life scenarios and it will actually help in building the concepts for you then put yourself in the shoes of the ceo founder ceo or any leader and think like them develop this mindset that's what i told you in, at the start that you have to think like them you have to put yourself in the shoes and this is not just from a from a from a learning perspective but if you think from an exam perspective this is actually the case right if you if you look at any sbl past papers you are always put in some shoes when you read the title of the or when you read the introduction of the question what you get to see first is you are the ceo of the company or you are the advisor to the ceo of the company so it is always that the examining team or the examiner or the exam always puts you in the shoes of the deciding authority or in the or in some authoritative position so not just during exam why not apply this this mindset game right from the right from the right from the time we are actually learning or actually reading this story book right it will help you think like them it will help you act like them it will it will help you understand the logics behind the decisions that are being taken at that level then keep in mind very very important thing that the in while writing your exam the quality of your answer will always matter than the quantity of your answer and this is relevant in i guess almost every exam that we have written right uh you have to write the best possible answer it does not matter whether it is five lines or 10 lines or five pages it does not matter if you think that you are able to provide your point if you think you are able to correctly justify your point in five lines then that becomes your answer you need not write or you need not extend your answer just for the sake of it okay then you have to not you are not expected to learn any model of course you are expect it would be better it would be helpful to know the name of the model and to under uh, and to remember a few pointers obviously that is always required when you are writing an exam because we want to pass the exam but from a learning perspective don't try to mug up the models understand the model understand the theory and then when you start uh, reading the practice book or you start reading the answers to various questions that we will be solving later you will understand that you will have to understand how the theory is being applied you will get to know uh, once we go ahead in the in during our uh, during our question solving that one model is being applied to two different answers in two different scenarios and there are two different ways to answer the or there are two different ways to use that model and 
there will also be a case where one answer can be solved using two different models so that would that becomes your next point that there is no one right answer please please remember this point in sbl any answer that is being given in your uh, practice manual or in, in your exam kit is just a suggestive answer you have the liberty to write the answer that you think best okay the examining team will always always give credit to you for writing your own answer you are not expected to write the answer that is there in the model <coughs> answer book every answer will be right but obviously the answer should be logical and it should have your right and correct conviction while writing it you should be able to put your point you should be able to present your point perfectly clearly logically accurately while writing your answer and then it does not matter if your answer is different from the model answers so keep this in mind you will find that the answers in model book run pages and pages but that is just a suggestive answer they are just giving you their point of view how they thought of writing this answer it can very well happen that you have your own different point of view you have your own different way of applying this model it is up to you and you do have that liberty so keep in mind then when obviously it is for the later parts but i am just keeping i'm just putting it right now when you start practicing questions always you have to first look at the verb of the question many students make this mistake of writing one answer for any type of question that is being given so there is a thing called porter's five forces model the the moment they understand that porter's five forces model is being used what they do is just they write the five uh, five forces that are there in the porter's five forces model and what that means and blah 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 that is not the case you are you are a professional you are writing a professional exam uh, you are not expected to just code the model that is of no use you are actually expected to apply the model and apply it in the right way so how will you understand what answer to write and how to apply the model is by looking at the verb so there will be various types of verbs like you have to discuss you have to analyze you have to evaluate you have to criticize you have to calculate all these five types of verbs and many more have different meanings when they say calculate your job is to purely calculate you don't need to provide extensive justification just one line of justification is enough but at the same time when you're asked to analyze or when you're asked to evaluate your calculation should be supported with a lot of arguments you should a calculation should be supported with a lot of evidences and pro points cons points everything should be there when when there is a verb called as analyze or evaluate when you are asked to criticize your job is to just criticize your job is not to put in the good points or your job is not to praise the the person of the 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 person your job is to purely purely criticize your tone should be a question in tone and you should just question or you should just try to i not prove the other person wrong but you should just try to challenge the other person's opinions and in a professional manner so in each of these five types of verbs the way you use your model is very very important in a in a criticize type of verb your porter's five forces model will be used to criticize in analyze and evaluate your porter's five forces model will be used to actually build 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 around that model how the how the scenario applies to that model so it is very very different for each of the type of verb that is being asked for your exam so always keep in mind you have to look at the verb that is there in the question then whatever professional skill is being asked in each as as we saw earlier that the professional skill will be asked one time for four marks so five skills will be asked for four marks each and you have to clearly demonstrate the professional skill that is being asked so there will be a question where you are given a where you are given a scenario the requirements and then you will be told that we are testing communication skills in this question so you are you should you should you should always your 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 brain should light up your your mind should light up that in this question 
I need to communicate effectively. So this skill will be will hold the most importance for my answer. There will be some parts of analysis, evaluation as well. But the most important part is how well you communicate, how well you put forward your points, how well you approach the the other person, how well you uh, put put forward the points concisely, how 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 summarized you are, how short the answer is, how how well formatted the answer is. All these points will come as a part of your communication skill. and last part last part is you have to always adhere to the format okay there will sometimes be a format that is being asked and if that is the case you have to have to have to always write in the format which is given they will they might ask you to write a report then your report format should be like a report your your format should look like a report if they ask you to write an email there your format should always have all these fields like from whom the email is being sent to whom the email is being sent the subject then your address to xyz the the start of the 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 introduction the body the conclusion and yours thankfully and all that stuff should come as a part of your answer if there is a note then there is a different format for it so these points you have to keep in mind when you are approaching sbl so right now before we are starting with our syllabus i want to put forward these points in front of you that whenever you start have these points in mind you have to you have to start your preparations or you have to start your reading by keeping in keeping in mind all these points that you have to apply while actually studying or while actually reading your content and it will definitely help you in writing your answers really better really well okay so i'm sure uh, we have ended uh, i'm i'm sure that you have enjoyed this uh, short lecture it was a introductory lecture not a big one and we will definitely meet uh, going forward uh, for 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 our technical skills syllabus which uh, which is our normal syllabus for 80 marks i hope you enjoyed this this short lecture and uh, i'm sure if you follow these things that i have just portrayed in this 8 to 9 slide slides uh, it you will find it pretty easy to grasp sbl and to to get a good score and i'm sure you many of you are going to come out as rankers in sbl and there would be no one happier than me if you if you get a rank in sbl because i think it is my favorite subject uh, out of all the four and i thoroughly enjoyed learning sbl or studying or reading sbl and grasping and it's it's my humble or it's my it's my honest job or it's my will or it's my wish that some student benefits from from the way i studied and from the way i started with my preparation so all the best guys i hope you 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 enjoyed this short lecture we'll meet next time all the best do your sbl preparations well don't don't get stressed out be happy and approach this as your story and make this your own story which will help you better retain all the concepts all the best guys let's meet next time thank you